Well, welcome back to the shop in Toronto. It's nice to have everybody here. I wish I was in Roscoe at the Catskill Rodmakers Gathering, but due to the pandemic and the travel restrictions, not able to attend. You know, George and I travel down to that every year. It's one of the highlights of our rod making calendar. We look forward to seeing everyone and spending time in a spectacular place. I went for the first time in the year 2000. I know George had been before. I think that the, the gathering's been underway since the mid 1990s. So quite an accomplishment to hold that every year. It's a lot of work and everyone that runs it should be congratulated, but more importantly appreciated because it's a ton of work and we really appreciate the work that they do. And we're deeply saddened that we can't get down there this year. I know some of the core guys will be there, but the border's closed and we're just not able to get down there. So thrilled to be able to help out in any way that I can. I'm going to do a couple of quick videos to help uh, principally new guys get going and also guys that have been going for a while and maybe looking to fine tune some of their, their, their techniques and strategies. When you buy a commercial ferrule, they don't go together. So one of the things you have to do is, is do a final fit on the, the male slide of the ferrule to get it to fit into the female ferrule. And that's what we're going to tackle today. I hope you can hear the ambulances. We live close to a hospital, which I guess is good and bad. Um, this is a size 13 Super Swiss Ferrule. And on a 13 Super Swiss, it's 13 at the business end where it meets the bamboo, but it is 15 uh, where the slide goes together. It's always two sizes bigger. So knowing that is a, might just help someone from getting confused. So we have here a size 15 Ferrule. Now, ferrules are always stated in 64ths of an inch, so I like to convert them to a decimal. So 0.2343 is the decimal size of this. And we really only focus on the fourth decimal, which is uh, the ten thousandths of an inch. We have tenths of an inch, hundredths, thousandths of an inch, and ten thousandths of an inch. So this ferrule uh, that we have, I measured it. It ranges from 0.2349 0.2347 so there's two ten thousandths of an inch difference over the length of the ferrule and almost always it's this end here that is bigger so I put some layout die on there to help us see you can use a blue sharpie but you don't have to put any on there I just think it's a lot easier for me to help explain what I'm doing when it's blue so in my mind what I do is I divide the slide into three sections you know, the front, the middle, and the back. And the first step is to make sure that all three sections are the same size. And on this ferrule, they are not. So when we get spinning this in the lathe, we're going to correct the fact that the, the front end here is a little bit bigger. Once all three sections are the same size, then we can reduce the ferrule all at once just by reducing test fit, reduce test fit, take our time, and uh, get a nice fit onto the ferrule. A lot of guys uh, don't do anything to the female ferrule. It's a good idea if you can to get in there and clean it up as best you can. I did a video on this a while ago, but you know there is debris and, and rough surfaces in there. So uh, it is a good idea if you can get in there and clean that up a little bit. But if not, it's not the end of the world. I know when I started, I did not do anything and I still have those rods and you know they work fine. Um, so we're going to reduce that till it fits in there nicely. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use a digital micrometer, which is this one here, which reads to four decimal places. So I don't know if how this is showing up on the camera. Uh, here it says two, three, five, eight. So all I'm really concerned with is this last decimal, the ten thousandths of an inch. And I'm going to use that to help get all three sections the same size. Once all three sections are the same size, I don't really need to use this very much. I'll use it today just to show us how we're doing. But by test fitting, you can just do it, do it yourself. You know, remove a bit of material, test, remove, test, remove, test. The papers that we're going to use are made by 3M. These are called 3M wet or dry. So it's not your traditional wet dry sandpaper that we've used all our lives. These are uh, noticeably different from their color 
and also from their construction because they're made from a, a flexible non-woven backing. It's very, very flexible stuff. And the abrasive that's embedded into the paper is silicone carbide. So that silicon is, is what does the cutting. And for whatever reason, you know, these work perfectly for the task that we're doing today. And we're going to use the green, the gray, and the blue. So that's a range from 400 grit, 600 to 1200. And there is a pink, which is 4000. There's also another uh, finer paper, but not really needed. Um, but it's nice to have a nice super polish on them when you get started. So these are the papers that we're going to use. These are readily available. They're not expensive. And you can buy these online um, almost anywhere. When I first started, all the books and, and all the people told me to buy these Grobe files. These are Swiss files. This is a size 6 and an 8. I also have a 4. I used these in the beginning. A lot of guys use these. They work extremely well. Um, you can get in trouble with them because they can cut quickly and they, they can clog up. And you know, they're a fine tool that work extremely well. And a lot of guys use them with great success. I guess the downside of them a little bit is the cost and they're a little bit fussier to work with but they are specifically designed for this purpose and they work extremely well so if you're using these and they work great then you probably don't need to do the papers but uh, if you don't have these and you're looking for a way to, to do it uh, I, I tend not to use the paper instead of the files even though I have the files. So. But to each their own everyone has a different perspective on things. That's the one thing about bamboo rod making. No way is the right way. My way is my way. Most of what I know I've learned from others or I've learned from trial and error, which is a great way to learn. It's time consuming, heartbreaking and expensive when you're doing things over and over, but you know, you learn and you learn from the process, you learn from your mistakes. So um, nothing wrong with making a few mistakes. I know when I first started, I undercut a few ferrules. They were, they were not the best fit, but what do you do? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get this spinning and we're going to start to reduce it and fit it to the female ferrule on the three jaw in the wood lathe here in the shop. So see you after I get set up. Thanks. Well, welcome back. Part two, I guess. One thing I forgot to mention in my little preamble was that if you don't have a lathe, you can mount this mandrel into an electric drill and mount that electric drill into a vise or MacGyver or something to uh, create a holder for it. And you can do this job with an electric drill. So you don't need a vise. Sorry, you don't need a lathe. Um, as I mentioned, I have a bigger lathe that I use with a big headstock and a big hole, but this works fine for this application. So I use it all the time. The other thing I should mention is when we're using our micrometer, I'm just going to zoom out here for us. All right. There's a little thimble here on the end and it has a ratchet. And that's the best way to use this tool is to just turn it until you hear the ratchet. If you use the main knob, your force of your hand can give you really disparate readings. So it's not a good idea. So use the thimble, you'll hear the ratchet. So let's have a look at what's going on here. I'm just going to uh, pull this back a little bit. And there you go. Okay, so I'm getting 51 on the end. I'm just reading the last uh, couple of numbers. In the middle, I'm getting 50. And at the end, I'm getting 51. 49 and a half, 55. So no matter what I do, I'm getting a larger reading out here on the nose. So I'm going to take some 400 grit and I've got a little block in my hand and I'm just going to put it on there and just work on the front third of the ferrule and just reduce that front third a little bit. Here we go.
Okay, so you can see with the die that I've really only touched the front part of this slide. So let's see what we get here. 49 and a half. Forty-nine and a half. A little bit bigger up there, fifty. But bigger right in there. Interesting. Just take a little piece of paper. Really, really narrow. Alrighty, let's have a look. 49, 51, 52, 51, 49 and a half, 49, 49, 51, 52. So we're getting a little variations in the readings, but we've got this correction done now where it's actually a tiny bit smaller there. So I'm okay with that now. And I'm just going to do a full, a full cleanup with the 400 over the entire length. And let's see what we get there. Just gonna get this die off of there. Now this is very interesting because you'll see that there's a low spot. The die has remained in one spot, yet it's clear there. These ferrules are never round. So that's another video for another time to correct that fault, but don't be alarmed when you take a reading here, and then turn it 90 degrees and take a reading and get a different value. Uh, these are not perfectly machined, perfectly round. They are stated as not round. I've talked to Bailey and he says, yeah, they're, they're out around a little bit. That's, that's part of the challenge. So interesting that we can see that now uh, very visually. So let's have a look. 45, 47, I'm gonna have to put my glasses on here. 47, 46, or six and a half. So I'm, I'm really happy now that we've got this thing um, basically the same length along its, its entire length, the same diameter along its length. So that is kind of step one. Once we've done that, it's now a function of just reducing the whole thing uh, to get it to fit into the, the female. Well, obviously, we're not where we need to be. <clears throat> so let's just take a measurement here. Forty-seven. And now we got rid of that uh, die. You can actually see now that that what you're seeing on the paper is nickel silver and we're getting a nice full length uh, wear pattern on the paper which is great it means that we're cutting along this length always feeling you never want it to get too hot if it gets hot just take a break go have a coffee or a glass of water and let the thing cool down so i'm right on i'm at 345 344 and a half, 345. Um, let me zoom out for you. Whoops. Let's see. 
can you see that? 45, 45, I apologize if it's not showing up that well, 45 and a half. Always seems to want to be a little bit bigger up there. So it was at 47, so we've taken it down a couple ten thousandths of an inch. Definitely not where we need to be. See the wear pattern? Nice and even. Nice and even. So that was two, two little removals there. Let's just see what we're doing. Not showing up as much of anything there. Nope. But it's the same size. So I can't get in trouble doing what I'm doing. I'm just going to continue on with the green 400 and I'm going to use the paper to help tell me that I'm taking a full amount of material off which you can clearly see I am on this pattern here okay turn this around Give it a little clean up. So we're at 45 now, we're at 43. 43. 44. Always seems to get a little bit bigger right down at the at the last spot, just the way it goes. So now I can feel it almost going on, almost going on. So that's good. I am going to get myself another piece of paper. There we go. Still with, still with the 400. Where am I going here? Zoom in. You can see here, all that mark that you see on the paper is material. Feel it, make sure it's not getting warm. Wipe off any, any grit. I'm getting the same reading along the entire length, which is great. And it's still too big. Well, this is all done in real time, so you can see how long it takes. Now, 
more times you do it, the little more aggressive you can be. But I think sneaking up on it is always a prudent practice, for sure. a little bit warm. Of course when it's warm it's going to give you a larger a larger value. It's interesting when I turn it a few degrees it gets smaller which is telling me that it's still out of round. But that is unfortunately the way it goes they're out of round. Very common. I can feel it now trying to get on. It probably needs about three more ten thousandths removed. So I'm going to keep switching up some nice fresh paper. There's a nice long piece here. Excuse me if I got in the way there. And here we go. See, I'm getting a nice full length mark on the paper, so I'm removing it evenly. Yeah, it's quite warm right now, so we're going to have to let that cool down a little bit. It always seems to be a little bit bigger here. It's a function of, I guess, the, the how you can get the um, the pressure on it. It always seems to be a little bit bigger there, which isn't too bad. But you can correct that at any time by using a narrow piece. But I think we're okay. Starting to cool down nicely now. And now it's starting to go on. It's no, it's not ready, but it's starting to go on. So I'm going to stop using that 400. So we go to the gray paper, which is 600. And what this paper does is it starts to remove the heavier scratch pattern of the previous grit, which was the 400. I'm not sure what we can see here. Um, I'll zoom out in a bit. There's 40, 42, 42, 41, 40, Okay, so it's starting to go on now. I've noticed that I'm a little bit small out of the front by about uh, one ten thousandths of an inch, believe it or not. So what I'll do now is I'll just take some paper and I will cut it smaller. 
so that I can make a pass without cutting the front part. This is the beauty of the paper. There we go. You see the control I have? I'm just now working the the middle section and the rear section. I'm not touching the front. And the ferrule is sliding on there already, so I know I'm getting really close there. slide out to the nose and clean that up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, it's a little bit warm, so I'll let it cool down. It's a little bit bigger here, but not too bad. So now I've got about a quarter of the way on. So now we're getting pretty close. So it's really wanting to come on now, so this is where you got to be really careful. And as I said, when you're not um, mounted on a rod, you can't get the full force. So I know that I could get that on further, but I would have a lot of trouble getting it off. And if you look at the wear pattern, which is, I'm going to just turn this on here for zoom in for you. The wear pattern is nice and easy. It's, it's, it's even all the way around which is a good sign when they're really out of round you get a wear pattern and then a shiny bar okay so let's just uh, I'm just going to jump back to the uh, gonna jump back to the 400 grit per second and just hit the bottom third, the bottom two thirds to the blue. And let's go to the twelve hundred. So 
it's going to be larger than it should be. So, got to be real careful that you don't keep going when it's hot. Okay, it's a tiny bit big right in here, which it almost always is, for whatever reason. And there you go. I could I could push that on, but I'll I'll never get it off. <laughs> so, uh, for me, I'm finished. I'm going to mount this ferrule onto the rod, both sections, and then I'll just final tune it up with some paper, probably just the 1200 until we get it to slide all the way on and perfectly nice and like I said if you've got one spot right at the end that is um, a bit big you can just use a narrow piece of paper just like that just to hit that one little yeah you know well, what is that um, quarter inch band so there you go I've got a nice even fit all the way on there nice wear And I can push it on with my hand about halfway and I just know from experience that if I continue working this this way it will be too loose um, when I have the, the leverage of the rod section so let's just zoom out and I'm just gonna do a quick pass cleanup pass with some pink to make it look nice There we go, and let's have a look, I don't know if you guys can see, I have to zoom out a bit more, can I? Yes I can, okay, so 39 and a half, 39 and a half, and this will be a bit bigger. I think I've gone too far. Hold on. Forty-two. So right there at the end, a little bit big. So what I'll what I would do is take a little narrow band like that, and simply kiss that back third a bit. But I'm going to stop for me because I know when the rod section's on, it's going to be, I'll undercut it. So the way it is now, it goes on nice and smooth. And I'm thrilled with that. And as I said, the wear pattern's even. So the beauty of the papers is it, it's really hard to go too far. You know, you have to be really careless. So by checking, fitting, checking and fitting, Hopefully you can get it down there. We've got it uniform along its length, except that tiny bit at the end, which we'll clean up. And I'm super happy with that, and it was easy to do. So hopefully that's going to help you with your feral fitting. And I look forward to seeing you guys at a gathering soon, and hopefully it's at the Roscoe Gathering in Roscoe, New York in September of 2021. Thanks a lot.